A popular YouTuber was charged $60,000 for a rescue, yet others in the same position were charged zero. Why? I reached out to my friends at Overwatch and Rescue to see what the data said about rescue costs. I also spoke with search and rescue professionals off the record to get their take on the situation. Generally in the front country, when you have an emergency, you'll call for an ambulance, you go to the hospital, and your health insurance will pay the bill. There might be a deductible or a cap, but generally they take care of the charges. But if you called an ambulance and your situation is not considered a medical necessity, you might have to pay the bill yourself. Now, some states regulate how much an ambulance service can charge, other states don't. Either way, you might be on the hook for some extra charges. And this is especially true for air ambulances, which obviously cost more to operate and can cost even more if you have specialized equipment or a flight doctor on board. You can even purchase specialized insurance that does nothing more than cover the cost of an air ambulance. Now, in 2022, the federal government passed the No Surprises Act, which limits what air ambulances and regular ambulances can charge for a rescue. But I've already heard that there's gaps and loopholes in the bill, and you still might have to pay for some of it. Now, let's contrast that with a backcountry rescue. Now, while there's no federal legislation on what a backcountry rescue costs or even is, the general rule of thumb is that a backcountry rescue costs nothing unless you are negligent. Now, as long as you're prepared and you're not breaking any rules like going onto a closed trail, you shouldn't have to worry about negligence. And even when people are negligent, they are rarely charged. So how can rescue cost zero dollars? Well, the majority of search and rescues here in the United States are done by volunteers and usually done in conjunction with an agency like a sheriff's department or a state park or a national park who manage the effort. Now, backcountry rescues don't always just rely on aircraft. A lot of the times a rescue will happen on foot with a litter where you're carried out by a volunteer team. When a rescue does involve an aircraft, the cost of that aircraft usually comes out of the budget of a sheriff's department or a park service. Sometimes even an air reserve unit is called in and that cost is written off as a training exercise. Now here's where it can get slippery. When you hit SOS in the backcountry, who responds can be variable. It can be backcountry, it can be front country, or it can be a combination of both. Let's use the Grand Canyon as an example. A hiker at the bottom of the Grand Canyon hits SOS on their device. Emergency services determine their injury is serious but not life-threatening. An aircraft is available and they're airlifted from the bottom up to South Rim Village where they're able to get medical care on their own. In that case, the rescue out of the Grand Canyon cost zero dollars because it was done by the Park Service. But if they decide to go to urgent care or hospital themselves, they would pay for that out of their own medical insurance. In the next scenario, a hiker hits SOS at the bottom, but they have a very serious injury and emergency services decides that they need to go to a trauma center. In that case, a private air ambulance might be dispatched from Flagstaff to come get the hiker at the bottom of the Grand Canyon and bring them back to Flagstaff so that they can have their injuries treated by a specialist team. In that case, the rescue, which was done via air ambulance, would not be free. It would be billed to insurance, just like a normal front country air ambulance, as well as the hospital visit. Now, how is the response to your situation determined? Well, that depends on what you're telling the rescuers, what resources the rescuers have available, and what the conditions are. There's a lot of different factors, but all those will go into the mix to decide what the appropriate response is to your situation. And generally how much it costs is not part of that equation. It's really about getting you to safety. Now hitting the SOS button isn't always about a medical issue. If we look at the statistics from 10,000 garment in reach rescues, you can see that there's other things like vehicle accident or vehicle issue. And if that were the case, a likely response would be to dispatch a tow truck or AAA to you, in which case that would be paid for maybe by your car insurance, by AAA, or maybe even out of your pocket. So you can see there's a lot of variables in terms of how much a rescue or a response to your SOS will cost. Now, because so many of these costs are out of my control and what I don't wanna do is hesitate to hit the button because I'm worried about how much it'll cost, what I recommend doing is getting optional search and rescue insurance or an SOS subscription service. If you have a garment in reach, I recommend purchasing the SAR 100 insurance. It's an insurance policy, so if you do get charged, you'd file an insurance claim, you send it to Garmin, and hopefully they will pay it. There are some restrictions, and if you do something considered a hazardous sport or you're going over a certain elevation, you might have to get the more expensive policy. But overall, I find it affordable, and it's something that gives me some peace of mind when I use my Garmin in reach. I find an SOS subscription service like Overwatch and Rescue to be a superior product though to cover you in the outdoors. It's a fully funded assistance program. So if you get a bill, you just send it to Overwatch and Rescue and they handle it. 
It includes high-risk sports and is not an upsell like the Garmin product is. There's nothing that comes out of your pocket and they're not going to ask you to file with your primary insurance like Garmin will. And they also have a lot of very thoughtful benefits like picking your car up from the trailhead and having a loved one come visit you if you're overseas in the hospital. The only downside is that you can't get this on all devices. Right now it's available on Spot, Motorola, Defy, and some other smaller devices, although hopefully that will change in the future. If you don't have a dedicated SOS satellite device, but you still want insurance, I recommend checking out a membership in the American Alpine Club. Membership includes different levels of outdoors insurance that should cover you in case of a problem. Now, search and rescue and search and rescue costs are about to get a little bit crazier. I mentioned earlier that search and rescue is mainly based on volunteer work. And right now, most search and rescue teams have their hands full just dealing with the current outdoors community, which includes people who have devices like Spots and Garmin inReaches. But we're on the cusp of a new technology that will allow pretty much anyone with a 5G cell phone to call 911 from the backcountry, increasing the user base that can call for a backcountry rescue exponentially. When that happens, I predict the system will be stretched to its limit and there's going to have to be some kind of legislation, budgeting or regulation that addresses the fact that now anybody can call for a backcountry rescue wherever they are. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out. And to wrap this up, the one thing that everyone who worked in search and rescue wanted you to know is that do not hesitate to ask for help because you're worried about how much it will cost. If you're in genuine need, Search and Rescue wants to help and time is an asset. The longer you wait, the worse things can get. So be responsible in your outdoor adventures, get some kind of SOS subscription service or insurance, and if you need help, ask for it.